Hey, what is it be? Sexy Beast, Ghost Signers, Tristan here. It's so great to see your faces. I hope it's great that you see mine. Weird. Um, but anyway, I uh, hope I don't delete this video on accident like I did last time where I record it as a vlog and then accidentally delete it and then I have to do CSGO gameplay. But if you'd rather not see my face, then, then I could do CSGO gameplay. Just let me know in the description below. It really doesn't matter on this channel. This is my second channel. Um, I don't really have a choice right now. So, uh, yeah, because I can't upload to my main channel. But anyway, this is how I survive without a job. So if you guys don't know, I actually recently took the step uh, and now I'm self-employed. Now I'm a full-time entrepreneur. I finally took the leap and uh, wanted to talk about my transition and how I'm surviving. Dude, how are you paying rent? Stuff like that. I get the question all the time. And so I just wanted to go over it with you guys. Now, again, keep in mind, I am going to be using actual numbers in this video from my real life because I don't care. I'm a very open person. I'll tell anybody how much money I make or don't make or whatever and uh, how much I have in savings, how much debt I have, stuff like that. It just doesn't matter, right? So I'm going to be very open today about like the process and what I, you know, my goals and how much money I actually make and used to make and stuff like that. So if you don't want to hear that, then click off of this video. If you do want to hear it because it doesn't affect you in any way, um, then definitely stay for this video because it's quite interesting and you can take some stuff from this even if you're working a full-time job um, or, you know, if you want to be an entrepreneur as well. So a little backstory, um, I'm 21 years old. I have worked, you know with somebody for seven consecutive years. I've had a job since I was 14, right? I got a job at McDonald's. I worked there for four years and then I left and I went with Best Buy and I've been with Best Buy for the last three years and now I'm self-employed. And also, if you guys don't know, I have a college degree, an associate's degree in entrepreneurial management, meaning, you know, be your own boss, stuff like that, right? How to make your own business and succeed on your own. So, this is something I'm very passionate about. I've had lemonade stands since I was a kid, uh, you know, did car washes and stuff like that. I started a YouTube channel. Like, man, I have really done uh, a lot. And, you know, being your own businessman and like being a business for yourself to me has always been attractive, right? Uh, I've never really been a fan of the whole nine to five job. You know, you got to be here all day, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm going to make an entire video um, on why I left Best Buy specifically and kind of why I won't work a nine to five job again. Um, but yeah, so today I just want to talk about how I survive and how I'm making it, um, because yeah. So anyway, I used to work full time as an AT&T expert at Best Buy. Now this is a pretty good paying job. I got bonuses. I got competitive pay. Uh, it was basically salary cause I'd have to work a minimum of 40 hours per week. And I'll go into that in just a second here. But anyway, after I got my real estate license in April, because I've, you know, I've I like being an entrepreneur, so you know, selling real estate was really attractive to me, plus I love houses. So I got my real estate li license this year uh, in April, and I dropped down to part-time at work because I had to do all these trainings and stuff like that, take all these courses, and I really wanted to be able to dedicate more of my time to selling real estate than you know, work at nine to five at Best Buy, right? So, because when I was full-time as an AT&T expert, I had a set schedule that I couldn't change, and uh, the hours were really, really bad. And um, yeah, so I, I needed to change that. And so the only way to really do that, which uh, really have any flex in your schedule is go to part-time, not even just a regular full-time job there. So yeah, that's a whole other story for another day. But uh, yeah, so I started doing that. And at the end of April, and this was actually scarier than um, going to be an entrepreneur, right? Taking the full leap. Cause I went from a guaranteed paycheck, right? A guaranteed 40 hours a week, every week, you know, uh, 52 weeks a year, stuff like that, which is making pretty good money to, um, part-time where, you know, you can get no hours or you can get 40 hours or you can get, you know, anything in between. So basically once I made the transition to part-time, my hours got cut. Some weeks I was getting four hours. Some weeks I was getting eight hours. Some weeks I was getting, you know, 12, 14, like under 20 hours. Now, if you guys don't know, I don't live with my parents, right? I, I actually live in Seattle and uh, I have to pay rent. I live with two guys and you know, rent and bills and car insurance and gas and all this stuff. Like my parents are, you know, not close to here, man. So it, it's not cheap, right? And so I have to maintain the standard of living and I have to fucking survive. And again, I didn't have a ton of money saved up. I had some, I had a couple thousand dollars saved up and that was for real estate stuff and my car situation. I'll, I could do a whole separate video on that and I will. Um, it, made that vanish, bro. It literally, I had like $4,000 saved up and it just, it was gone in, in a weekend. So, um, yeah, it, that's a whole other story. But again, 
So I started saving for this, like this transition and stuff, and I was ready for it. I was like, all right, let's fucking go. And so I go to part time, and then I'm getting no hours, bro. I was getting four hours, eight hours, stuff like that. Now, again, you can pick up hours, but when you're getting scheduled that few of hours and you're trying to pick up hours, you're relying on people not wanting to work their own hours because they also have bills and stuff like that. So some people are really reluctant or really willing to give up their shifts, and other people are really reluctant to give up their shifts. And so it really depends on the week, really depends on the person. So it's super, super inconsistent. So anyway, I go from this guaranteed paycheck check which is pretty fucking good and definitely enough to keep the lights on and keep me alive to making you know what eight hours a week is only like a hundred to two hundred dollars like it's really not a lot uh and i definitely can't survive on that right so anyway i was like really fucking scared i was like what do i do what the fuck i don't know you know and again i, I had a little bit saved up but not a lot and i'm like man i really got to start picking up hours so i would pick up other hours and i would help other real estate agents so i can actually you know, I get paid to help other real estate agents, meaning like if they can't go on a showing, right? Let's say they're working with a client and they need another client to see a house. They pay me hourly or sometimes just a flat fee uh, for going out and driving out to that the, the house or those houses or whatever and doing the showings for them or sitting in the home while the inspector's there with their clients and stuff. If you guys don't know about real estate, there, there's inspections, there's all sorts of stuff. But basically I get paid uh, by other realtors to help them out when they're, when they're busy. So that was really nice. And I started doing more of that. And then like I said, Said I was uh, trying to pick up hours and stuff like that, but it was super inconsistent. And I'm like, some weeks I'd make a couple hundred dollars, other weeks I'd make, you know, like $200, and some weeks I would make like $600. Uh, it really just depended on what I was doing and how much work the other agents needed help with uh, and how many hours I picked up. Some hours I would, sometimes I would work 40 hour weeks and I'd work 10, 12 days straight, whatever, at Best Buy when they needed help and people were calling out. But other days, other weeks, I would work eight hours or 12 hours or 16 hours, like a super, super low. And it's, it's just not reliable, bro. And a lot of these shifts were four hours. So some weeks I would work, you know, 10 days straight at four hour shifts, bro. And it was just, it was not a lot of fun, man. And uh, again, I really wasn't making that much money because I used to make more money with my flat set schedule of 40 hours a week. Um, and yeah, so, and that was 40 hours paid. It was like, I had to be there for like 45 hours a week, but after your lunches, it's 40 hours paid. So you would get uh, five lunches every week and uh, they were all half an hour and they were all unpaid. So I'd really have to be there for 42 and a half hours. But when you factor in drive time there and back, changing into your uniform, stuff like that, it's really like 45 to 50 hours because you gotta leave early to make sure you don't get stuck in traffic and you get to the job on time. And then you gotta come home and change and stuff like that. Whereas if I just didn't have that shift, I wouldn't have to do any of that, right? So I really wasn't making that much money and I was working a lot of these really short shifts and it just sucked. It really did suck. Um, and like I said, I'll make an entirely separate video on why I left Best Buy. But anyway, uh, it, it reached a point where I was like, oh my God, like how am I going to pay rent, right? So I downloaded DoorDash. A uh, coworker told me about this, which is a food delivery service like Uber Eats. So basically people order food and I deliver it to them. And it's, it's like a third party company. So it, it's not like it's an independent contractor job, meaning you're not employed, right? So I don't have to... I don't have to deliver, but uh, I can deliver as much as I want if I want to. So I, I signed up for that and I got approved and I signed up for Uber Eats as well. And from my experience, I make more money with DoorDash. People tip way more. Uh, you get a minimum of six fifty in my area per delivery, which is phenomenal, bro. It's amazing. So, you know, some, some deliveries are just a couple miles and other deliveries are like 14 miles, right? So you're putting mileage on your car and you're spending gas and stuff like that. But I, I can make a whole separate video on just DoorDash alone. Um, but it's actually, it's not bad. Even after you factor gas in, you're making, you know, decent money depending on how you do it and if you optimize your service. So I started doing that and I was just doing it occasionally. I really wasn't doing that that much. My main focus was picking up hours at work because I was making the most doing that uh, or actually helping other realtors. I was making even more than I was making at Best Buy. So for example, um, let me just give you an example real fast. So I started doing that and I was helping other agents. Now on June 10th, nearly three years after starting work with Best Buy, I submitted my two week notice. I was like, I, I quit, I'm out of here. And like I said, I'll make a whole video on that. Um, but basically it was to transition into real estate and to being an entrepreneur. And so I saw the potential of all this stuff and it was better than I was doing at Best Buy, right? It was, I was making more money. It was, there was, there was no ceiling on how much money I could make, especially as a real estate agent. Uh, it, it's just better in a lot of ways. And it was the next step for me. And like I said, I've been concurrently employed for seven years now, and it was time to finally do it on my own. And it's scary. It's definitely scary. But honestly, that leap was actually exciting. Whereas when I went from full time to part time and I was seeing four hours, eight hours a week, that was fucking scary, bro, because I didn't have a backup plan. I didn't know how I was going to pay rent, honestly. And now I do. I have a concrete 
uh, plan and it's it's clear it's a it's something that I stick to it's something that I'm kind of like religiously uh, into right so anyway um yeah uh, let me see so like I said I'll make an entirely separate video on why I quit Best Buy my last day was actually Tuesday June 19th I know you guys are like wait a minute you submitted your two weeks on June 10th what the fuck um, well I actually had a vacation planned from the 20th to the 27th and so my last day happened to fall on a day I wasn't going to be working anyway but that's fine because I was part time they really didn't need me like I just I was a great employee you know I'd always show up on time I was reliable I'd pick up shifts like I would do my job I would do more than my job stuff like that um, but yeah so I was like oh, well I'm just going to I'm just going to leave before my performance review because my performance review meaning you get a raise and stuff like that my 3 year uh, performance review would have been in July so I was like let me just leave before this so they don't waste their time on the paperwork and giving me a raise and stuff like that when I'm just going to leave anyway so anyway my weekly goal now is to gross $600 per week now if you guys don't know the difference between gross income and net income is I'll explain it to you so gross income is how much money you make like overall, like your total amount. And then net income is the amount you actually take home. So for example, there's taxes and there's, you know, stuff like that if 401k contributions and insurance, if you have that, um, that come out of your check before you even see it, bro. So I was doing that and my weekly income goal now is $600 per week. Now, again, that sounds like a lot of money and to some, it might be a lot of money, but as a, as an adult and as a person who's been working full time, especially cause I live in Seattle, you know, it, it's all right, but it's uh, definitely not crazy. Okay. So yearly that comes to $31,200. If you were to work the 52 weeks a year, which really you're only going to work like 50 weeks a year or even less than that. Uh, so it's about 30K a year for all intents and purposes, right? So why $600, right? Why is that my goal? Why, why, right? So I used to make $17 an hour at Best Buy and uh, that's more than most of my uh, coworkers were making. And there's a, there's a good reason for that, but uh, not gonna get into that in this video. That's actually really high for my store, 17 an hour. Most folks were making, you know, 13, 14, 15 an hour, right? 15 an hour is like a high. I was making almost as much as my supervisor, bro. It's crazy. So anyway, um, I was working 45 hours a week though, because like I said, you gotta, you gotta put on your uniform and fucking drive over there and do all this stuff, right? And only 40 hours were paid, because like I said, I had to be there and you get unpaid lunches. So that's a gross of $680. So you're like, oh, what the fuck? You're taking a loss. But again, in April, I went to part-time and I was making far less than $680 a week, trust me. So anyway, but after taxes and your 401k contribution, which I ended up stopping for a little while there and then I brought back, it's complicated. I, I'll get into a totally separate video on why I did that. Um, but anyway, I would only take home $565 plus bonuses. Now the bonuses were pretty nuts. Sometimes, you know, like 700 to a thousand dollars and then after tax, you know, it's like four or 500 bucks, um, four, four to $700. It really depends. But, uh, yeah, so I live in Washington where there's no income tax, but there is federal income tax. There's just no state tax, which is super nice, but our sales tax is fucking 10%. But anyway, um, last year, you know, my gross income was $38,000, which is phenomenal, bro. That's absolutely amazing. That averages to about 19 an hour because after you get your bonuses and stuff like that, it's, it's pretty good. It's not bad at all. Um, and my goal of $600 makes me net approximately the same. So with having the goal of $600, now again, I'm not counting taxes in right now because I don't actually owe any taxes right now because when you're an entrepreneur, you can pay taxes quarterly or you can pay them at the end of the year, right? So I don't get them taken out of my checks. I pay them to the IRS when I file my taxes, right? So I actually owe money, but uh, I'm not going to get into why you shouldn't get a tax refund in this video. That's a whole separate video on that, but yeah, you should not get a tax refund, but that's a totally separate video. Um, so the goal of $600 makes my net about the same. Because keep in mind, when I'm doing, you know, when I'm doing these food deliveries, right, DoorDash and Uber Eats, and when I'm driving for real estate agents, like I'm spending a lot on gas. Last month, for example, I spent $320 on gas, um, which is pretty, that's pretty huge, bro. I was filling up twice a week uh, at about $40 each time. So, it, you know, it adds up. But again, I made $2,900. So, you know, it's about a little over one-tenth of my income is being spent on gas which again is not bad at all. I got a new car actually, if you guys don't know, um, and I'll make an entirely separate video on that. I got a great, great, great car, man. Super, super nice. But um, yeah, so anyway, after all that, you know, I'm, I'm netting about 500 plus dollars a week, right? Which is not bad at all, because that's a full-time income for sure. Definitely more than I was making part-time, right? So that's why the goal is 600, right? So that I net about 500, which is about the same as I was making full-time as an AT&T expert at Best Buy, right? 
So yeah, that's why I do that. And then again, what's nice is I get mileage deductions and I don't pay taxes until next year. So I get mileage deductions for all the miles I drive for DoorDash, all the miles I drive for Uber Eats, all the miles I drive for real estate. And uh, it saves me a lot of money. So right now I don't owe any taxes because my deductions, given my expenses for real estate and my, my uh, driving deductions are actually less than I've made this year uh, from doing all that. So, and that's gonna change here soon, but it, basically I don't owe any taxes on that income. I actually take a tax loss, uh, which is pretty cool. So anyway, you, I only need about $400 a week to cover all my bills. So why would I set the goal at 600, right? Well, setting the goal at 600 gives myself, you know, like a little bit of a buffer, right? So I can go out with friends. I can do all this other stuff like, oh, I got to pay down some debt, stuff like that. Because I, you know, put some on my credit card and then, you know, I have student loans still. And uh, yeah, so the $600 a week just gives me some flexibility. You know, for the longest time when I was part time, I was like, oh, I only need to make $400 a week because um, that's what really what I only needed. Right. But uh, obviously, you know, making more than that is is a good thing. So anyway yeah last last month I made about twenty nine hundred dollars and July was the first full month of being uh, an entrepreneur right so being my own businessman and uh, I did it I, I passed my goal every single week uh, which was amazing some weeks I barely <laughs> barely passed I got like 605 601 something like that and some weeks I got 700 right uh, or whatever just depending on what I did so again but 600 is the minimum and then I go Monday through Sunday on that so I track how much money I earn every day um, and then, you know, apply it toward that $600 and see how much I need to make that weekend or that week to hit that goal. So anyway, this makes sure that I survive and that I got income coming in. And, you know, why do I do all this? Why? You know, like, well, what the fuck? I didn't quit my job to deliver food full time, right? I didn't quit my job to drive for agents full time. What I quit my job to do is, is real estate, right? Sell homes. Uh, that's where the real money is. That's where you make thousands of dollars a sale. Uh, in my market, bro, the average sale, you know, the average home price is like 350,000. Uh, that's a gross commission of about 9,000, $10,000, depends on the house. Um, you can make more, you can make less, depends on the, the price of the house, of course, but that's a lot of fucking money, man. And so this is why I quit, you know, uh, was to do real estate full time. Now, again, just to make ends meet until I'm getting clients and until I'm actually selling homes is why I'm doing this $600 a week thing, right? So now I deliver food with DoorDash. So some weeks I'll deliver $300 worth of food. Some weeks I'll only deliver $100 worth of food because I would much rather do showings for other agents. Now, when I do showings for other agents or help them out, I typically make anywhere from $20 to $40 an hour, including my drive time, bro. It is insane. It's super profitable. Um, and like I said, I don't know taxes on it until next year and I get the mileage deductions and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm making money hand over fist, definitely more than I was making at Best Buy because my net pay at Best Buy, after you factor everything in, after my taxes and stuff was $14.11 an hour. So any income I make now that's more than $14.11 an hour is a win. So minimum I make for real estate is $20 an hour. So even once you factor gas in, which is like I said, that's about 10%, right? I'm still making $18 an hour, right? It's amazing. Now, again, taxes on it, whatever. I'll, I'll get into that. You know, it's no big deal. But yeah, dude, it's so I took a step up, right? And now that I'm making more money per hour, I work less hours and I'm making more money than I was at Best Buy, bro. It's absolutely insane. It's been so sick. So anyway, what I do to survive is I deliver food with DoorDash. So for example, sometimes I'll deliver from 11 to 1 and other times I'll deliver 5 to 9, right? And I'll make, you know, $100 a day. It really just depends on the day. Some days I only work nights. Some days I only deliver in the afternoon. Some days I don't fucking work at all, you know? It, it's cool because I make my own schedule and I do whatever the fuck I want. And as long as I hit that weekly goal, which I hold myself accountable for, then I'm good, right? So, you know, some weeks where I don't get a lot of showings uh, for, for other agents and stuff like that, then I do DoorDash. Um, and, uh, yeah, cause why not? I can just get on the app anytime I want and do as many deliveries as I want. My average on DoorDash is, you know, probably 15 to 25 an hour. It really depends. Some hours I make no money. Some hours I make $26. Some, some hours I make $18, right? It, it really just depends. But a lot of the time I'm not making a lot of money. I'm just sitting in my car, not getting deliveries. Hours that I'm actually getting deliveries, I'm making, you know, about $20 an hour. Uh, it's pretty good. Even when you factor gas in, you know, it's like 18 or so. So uh, it's really not bad at all. But again, another thing that I just recently started doing is doing showings for a website called Open Listings. 
So as a real estate agent, I have a real estate license and I can get access to all the properties in Washington state, meaning I can access the key box and unlock those properties and go into them legally um, if they're available, right? If they're vacant or, you know, if I get the owner's permission or whatever, right? So that's highly valuable. Having a real estate license is highly valuable. Now, again, selling real estate is how you get the most for your license. Don't get me fucking wrong. That's the goal. That's what I'm working on every fucking day. But uh, until I grow my business and get to that level, then, you know, this is a way to get supplemental income while I'm doing it, right? So anyway, I started delivering for this or uh, driving for this site called Open Listings. I actually did my first showing today and I make $30 an hour doing this, bro. It's uh, including drive time. So, you know, if it takes two hours there and back, dude, I just made 60 bucks in two hours. Like that's twice as much as I was making at Best Buy, bro. It is insane. So, and that, if I were to do that full time, averages out to $60,000 a year. Now, again, I'm gonna make a lot more money selling real estate than $60,000 a year if I hit my goals, right? If, if I do what I'm supposed to do and do it religiously and, you know, door knock and cold call, and I could do a whole separate video on that. But uh, yeah, so now I, I do those kind of three things and four things really. So, DoorDash. I don't do Uber Eats. I make way more money with DoorDash. I just don't even bother with Uber Eats anymore. DoorDash, showing for other agents, open listings, and obviously selling real estate. That is how I'm gonna make my money. Now, eventually, I'll just be doing real estate sales full time and uh, won't be doing food deliveries and I won't be doing open listings and I won't be doing any of this stuff. But it is nice to have that money coming in. It really is nice because I need it, bro, because I put some money on my credit card, I have student loans, I got bills, like eh, I haven't sold the house yet, so eh, you know, it's tough. But anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did stay till the end of this video, please comment entrepreneur in the comment section below. Now, I realize a lot of you aren't gonna know how to spell that word, but give it your best go. Have a great day. I fucking love you guys. This is Ghost Sickness, and I'm out. Hey,